Hey friends and good morning. Welcome to Stocks and Crypto Plays. I'm talking about AMC stock. We have some big news. <clears throat> well, if you take a look here, Optimal Projection tagged me to get me aware of what's going on. Um, Vice Chancellor Zern asked questions to the plaintiff's counsel regarding the plaintiff's standing to represent the class. Thank you to Optimal Projection. Shout out to you and high five. Thanks for supporting the AMC Ape community. So let's take a look here, what it says. In the Court of Chancellery of the State of Delaware, this is an update. Um, basically, it says the third revised transmittal affidavit of Michael Berry providing log of stockholder communications. You know, we've been emailing, sending letters, all this stuff telling them we got the postcard late, we didn't get the postcard at all. I have my petition going on, so hopefully he'll add my petition into that soon. We have close to a thousand subscribers, or not subscribers, signatures. If you take a look here real quick, boom, 986 supporters, signatures, 10,000 views, 710 shares. And some people donated like to promote this. If you look down here, $595 of contributions, 8,000 views. That, that's amazing. You guys are just amazing. Like. Look at this, 986 supporters. I'm gonna show this to the judge and hopefully we get this in the official law documents. Um, I wanna get us to 1K before we send it. So can you get us over 1K before I send it? Uh, here, I'll put the link, I'll pin it in the comments, okay? So let's get back to this. Michael J. Berry, hereby depose and say, I am a director of Grant Eisenhofer and a member in good standing of the Bar of Supreme Court of the state of Delaware. GE is co-lead counsel of record for plaintiffs in the above caption action log. Blah, 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 blah. Was counsel for plaintiff Allegheny County Employees Retirement System on June 7, 2022 in connection with the filing of plaintiff's reply. In further support of the statement, I submitted my original transmit providing log of stockholder communications received between May 1 and May 31, representing such communications in six separate exhibits. On June 9, submitted revised transmittal of stockholder communications contain minor edits. On June 16, I submitted a second revised transmittal communications with updated necessities, initial audit of stockholder submissions, paragraph five, since the submission of my second affidavit, further audit has identified additional timely stockholder submissions that were omitted from prior affidavits and a handful of stockholder submissions that were already included but were listed in the wrong categories or required changes to reflect legal names. The exhibits here to correct these errors and omissions to exhibit A through F, my second affidavit. No delay in providing these submissions to special master as they were received. Exhibit A is a revised index of objections that were submitted with proof of ownership and which explicitly requested opt out from the settlement. Exhibit A was revised to account for the results of all audits to date. Exhibit A through one, Follow corrections, exhibit B, revised index, blah, blah, blah. Exhibit B1 contains edits, blah, blah, blah. I'm only going to read important stuff to you guys, okay? Let's keep moving here. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Keep moving here. Okay, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of Delaware that the foregoing is true and correct. And they signed to it. Uh, okay, so let's go out of here and then let's look at the Chancellor summarizes the new letter and update on the AMC case from the judge. Let's see here about that. It's opening now. Hmm. Special Master's report and recommendation coming out tomorrow. What is this? Continue reading. All right, here we go. Court of Chancery of the State of Delaware, June 20th, 2023, okay guys? <laughs> Dear counsel, I write in advance of the statement hearing in this action with some questions for the party's counsel. Given the pace of this matter, I wanted to give the parties an opportunity to respond in writing before the hearing instead of afterwards. Let me see. 
So guys, this is from Morgan Zern, Judge Zern. <clears throat> class certification involves a two-step analysis. The first step, a prerequisite for class action certification. Let's see. Earlier today, I granted Mr. Munoz's counsel a motion to withdraw and his co-plaintiff's motion to dismiss him from this action. A few questions concerning each remaining plaintiff follow. I'm trying to see if it's impo what's important there. Anthony Franchi. It's like Anthony Fauci, but it's Anthony Franchi. I don't see anything like significant there. March 2nd, I entered an order consolidating the two matters into the instant action. On March 13th, the plaintiff's counsel filed a letter representing to the court that the statutory claim will be included as a basis for plaintiff's motion. Okay, this just looks like, so far this just looks like basic uh, paperwork. The parties and their agents have used inconsistent definitions of settlement class. Some definitions define the class as including stockholders from August 3 through and including the settlement class time, whereas others define the class as comprising stockholders between August 3 through and including settlement class time. Still, others are different. Settlement consideration is proposed to be distributed to all common stockholders immediately before the conversion takes place at the settlement class time. Wow. So basically, that's a big important part right there. The judge is saying that Hey, I don't care if they just owned it from August 3 to settlement time. She's saying, I wanted to say all common stockholders immediately board before the conversion takes place. She wants it to affect, be effective for all AMC stockholders, regardless of when it was purchased. That's what it looks like to me. Okay, here goes her questions. My questions. Has Mr. Fauci, I'm kidding, it's a joke, Mr. Franchi owned, has Dr. Fauci owned AMC common stock continuously from the wrongs alleged by the plaintiffs through the present or did his ownership begin on November 8th? In the letter, does Mr. Franchi have standing to bring claims based on wrongs that predicated his stock ownership? If the answer to II is no, how does that lack of standing to press the least one of the claims before the court informed Mr. Franchi's ability to serve as a class representative, his personal interest in pursuing claims he has no standing to bring, and the typ typicality of his claims vis-a-vis -vis is a class, the settlement class limited to AMC common stockholders that continuously held AMC common stock the entire time from August 3 through 20, including and, and including the settlement class time, or does it also include AMC common stockholders that held AMC common stock at any time between August 3 through and including the settlement class time. I don't know guys, this is just a lot of like legalese. I'm trying to find something for you guys, okay. This person says, I have to say about this right now is Jordan Affolter should get an honorary something from somewhere because he managed to find something that lawyers who are most certainly being paid thousands of dollars an hour all managed to absolutely whiff on at various stages of this game. And if Allegheny doesn't have another brokerage statement showing that they own actual AMC common stock in another brokerage account somewhere, this case is about to get absolutely ape wild because if it's not at all clear that Vice Chancellor sees Franchi as a viable representative lead plaintiff under the operative facts here, the crazy thing is that the claim, as I elaborated on here, is in my professional opinion, after lots of reflection, a bit of a unchain, as they say, particularly in light of the opt-out and the certificate of incorporation and the latest and greatest gloss, blah, blah, blah. What? Just when you think you can't go more sideways, we go off, maybe for the moment, actually, to bed much love. That's to the Chancellery Daily. You can uh, subscribe. I might do that. Inside the Delaware Court of Chancery by chance. Interesting. This black and white print hurts my eyes, guys. It blinds me. I can't barely read it. I don't know if that happens to any of you guys. But you know what? Here's the big thing, guys. We discovered like together right now, which I already knew, is... Um, which I already knew is that Allegheny doesn't like own any AMC shares. They own less than a thousand shares, if any at all now we're wondering. So why are they the lead plaintiffs? 
Were they a plant? Was Allegheny a plant to create this stupid bogus fake settlement, which we're really getting nothing because they told you they're going to pay you out one share for every seven and a half shares that you own after the reverse split. So after they take 90% of your shares, they're going to say, okay, we'll give you one for every seven and a half you own. That's like nothing. I'm not a financial advisor. That's not financial advice. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. It's my personal opinion. So here we have Adam Aaron talking about how he was on a Zoom call with Mar Margot Robbie. Uh, she's amazing. I look forward to seeing her movie, Barbie. She's a fantastic actress. Um, so he was probably super excited to be on a call with her as anyone would. But, uh, oh, look at this guy, Ethan. He's really a good guy too. He says, the judge has officially questioned the plaintiffs if they have standing. Now will she question and challenge the postcard notice? Yeah, I hope so. Let me hit like on that. Also, look what I look what I commented to Adam Aaron under here, guys. Look. Oh, they hit it. They hit my comment. Really? How do they even do that? They hit my comment, guys. I was like ripping Adam Aaron a new one and they hit my comment. Maybe they deleted it. Maybe they removed it. How could they do that? They did. I think they somehow they removed my comment. Like I said under there, I was ripping Adam Aaron and I told him to cancel the reverse split. And I said, he doesn't even have the power to reverse it because he signed over power to Antara Capital and they removed my comment. Wow. Can you believe that guys? Wow, they removed my comment. Okay guys, so you see how corrupt they are. Uh, so just to wrap things up, comment below. What do you think about all this? What do you think about Allegheny not having standing as lead plaintiff? And if they don't, can we get one of us in as lead plaintiff? Can we get Mr. Brian Tuttle in there? Can one of us do it? Can we get a lawyer? I uh, Someone commented in my last video that we need a federal lawyer. Um, I don't know. We definitely need a lawyer as a, as a group here. Um, who can take lead counsel if we get the opportunity? My, my first thought is Brian Tuttle because he's done a great job. I can contact him. I do have access to contact him. Um, and we do kind of talk back and forth sometimes by email, sometimes other ways. So, um, you know, and I know he watches the videos. He could be watching this right now. So maybe we do need a new lead plaintiff. All right. Hit like, subscribe, add notifications, share the video with a friend. What do you guys think about all this? Talk to you soon.